It's October the 29th, 2015. I'm Dana Durnford, also known as nuclearproctologist.org. And you can find my videos and Fukushima presentations of Beautiful Girl by Dana on YouTube. And we start off today by saying hello to everybody in the chat room at Beautiful Girl by Dana. This is stream 10.30 a.m. Pacific Canada time in British Columbia. And I just want people to understand that Japan really truly is about to kill the Pacific Ocean. And that the media has put an amazing amount of time and energy into scripting that everything is hunky-dory and wonderful and smells like roses. And so when I'm doing the headlines today, I'm going to try to do... Uh, what I'm going to try to do is get my act together for starters. I'm not supposed to be there. I'm supposed to be here, Dana. Don't mind me. I can move pretty fast when I want to. But we got another computer taken down on us. That's eight or nine in a year and a half. And so we're going to use the laptop and we're going to try to get that other computer, see if we can figure out who's doing it to us and get it repaired. And that could take weeks. Uh, so we're going to be using, we're not going to be using all the software that we normally use. We just don't have it on this computer. It's a thousand bucks to stick it on this computer. So anyway, hopefully this works out for everybody. And I'm not going to be doing the episodes till I get my equipment back. Or I get new equipment, one or the other. And so yesterday episode, I'm going to change the name on that. It's not going to be an episode. Rain with 20 million particles of radioactive iodine, 131 felt per liter during the post-Fukushima peak. So 20 million particles, atoms, radioactive iodine. You see how he models everything? And it's not their fault. I mean, they're getting the headline from, it's not any news. It's they're getting the headlines from everywhere else. Um, 20 million particles of iodine-131. 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 Let me see. Iodine-131. Hang on a second. I just wanted them dazed there. And there was uh, 4 million Beckwells, a square meter, in a major city. That was in Japan. And 20 million in America in a, in, a, in a liter of rain. Does rain fall but a liter? So the absorbed radiation doses of 132 was 10 times higher. Northern Japan. But what about North, North America? Yeah, it'd be the same thing. Because the jet streams will get it here. Now, iodine-132 got a shorter half-life than iodine-131. But does that negate the fact that it's... Uh, radiates your thyroid glands nine times more effectively. Because that's what it does. And so does 133. And there's 30 times more iodine-133 for every iodine-131. And oh my, we've seen the iodine-131. And just one of those, not 20 million, but just one of them, is one of the 1,800 autoimmune deficiencies. And, you know, the last one you're going to get is a cancer. Cancer is the last one you're going to get. It's, it's the mouse in the room. The 1,800 autoimmune deficiencies, like Lorraine Moritz will tell you, are, and many other people certainly that are being honest and truthful. But iodine-131 is never going to go away. And there's 31 times more of that. Okay. Back that trolley up, Mr. Durnford. And so rain with 20 million particles of radioactive iodine... Also, if they had a check, would have been the one ten times more one thirty two ionizing radiation thyroid glands nine times more effectively. I'm getting there. Bear with me. And then you would have had thirty times more iodine one thirty three. The average person in Seattle breathed in ten hot radioactive particles a day during April. Ten hot particles a day, and a single particle will cause a knoll in your in your body. And there's two thousand of these, and depending on where sequesters in your body 
will de depend upon. Now, right away, your body's flooded. I'm burping while I'm talking. Right away, your body is flooded with white blood cells just from a single atom. Well, how about if you drank a liter of that rainwater? How about if you were collecting rainwater? Well, right away, there was 20,000 excess uh, adults deaths that in those couple of months. Uh, that was a spike compared to all the previous years of that month. It was an abnormality. 20,000 people died of strokes and heart attacks right on the spot. Dropped dead. That were contributed in a study, in a paired review study, in an academic study, in an institution, in a major showing that. But there was many studies showing children were brutally affected. I had a very dear friend that I didn't know. I had moved away to another spot years ago. And I found out last year a really close friend of mine, right after Fukushima, within a couple of months, his uh, thyroid gland died. And that family had already suffered enough, as far as I was concerned. You know, and see that happen to that family, that, that was a tough, that was tough news for me, trust me. Because I knew it was directly related to the Fukushima fallout. And the average person in Seattle was breathing in 10 hot particles a day. So, let's try to put that in some kind of context for you. So Japan has three melted reactors. Hang on. Let's go over and bang into that for a second. Japan has three 100% melted reactors. I got something right here for you to flush that out right quick for you. Because we're using new software, got to do everything different. Let me just come over and check and see if everybody's in the comment section. And I'm just going to open up the video because we're using a new system to stream these live out at Beautiful Girl by Dana on YouTube. And sometimes I should check just to make sure I am streaming. Okay, we're streaming. And because the comments on the inside, right, you can see inside of my control panel. And you'll get a bit of background noise because we're dysfunctional, right? And so you got Mickey and Shaniken and Albert and Bob and Cotton and fans filtration. And right, so the, it's up here on that side of it. So it gets really confusing anyway for me. It's hard for me to monitor it this way without the normal system I was using, but whatever. And so they're building this sarcophagus, a, a temporary Kevlar type sarcophagus around Unit 1. That's Unit 1 in there. This is 100% melt out, melt through, melt out. And they're building that so they can direct the emissions into the stacks, right into that chimney there. And so they're going to direct the emissions into that so that the homeless will last longer. Because Harvard, Yale, Berkeley, Stanford, MIT, Oxford, all the major scientists, there is no nuclear scientist anywhere on the planet went there. They got a million excuses, which one do you want to hear? And so the only people here are homeless. That's the only people you'll see there with a suit on, with a, something in their hand doing something is homeless. This is Unit 2. This lost its entire inventory. Its entire inventory. There's two meltdowns. This is shocking because each of these are three times the size of Chernobyl. Each of these are 100% meltdowns, melt through, melts out. But Chernobyl was a 30% meltdown. And Chernobyl stopped after 10 days. But these didn't stop. This is Unit 3. Well, you want three there, a little bit over here, there's a kind of bit right there, it's all over the place. But that was where unit three used to be. And they would take the reactor cores and put them up on the sixth floor. This was the ten story building. <laughs> I know. And so but up at the sixth door story they would store the reactor cores above the reactor. So if there was an issue there, it'd melt through that and down into the reactor, I guess. Make sure they got, they had a total meltdown. Might as well take it all at one time. 
And so that design of putting the reactor spent fuel pools, whoever, whoever come up with that design should get the bullet in the back of the head and their family should have to pay for the bullet. And no pun intended. And that has marked our demise on this planet. That is the nail in this coffin of this planet. And let me keep going. We'll get back to the Pacific Ocean and seafood. They all detonate it, but this is Unit 4. Now, the spent fuel pools were on the sixth floor. And so that's all gone, too. So 1, 2, 3, and 4, all gone. All detonations. The minute they had a detonation, that was the end of that. And game over. Period. But the industry lied to you for the last four and a half years, continue to lie to you. And so your mainstream media will only tell you what the industry will tell them to say. So your media is not who you think it is. Your media is not your friend. Your media is not someone you turn to for data. An academic peer review study is not necessarily someone you turn to for data. But it's better than the conjectures and the commentary you're going to get from mainstream media, it's better to go read it yourself. Yeah? Yeah. So these buildings ejected their mass uh, 5,000 feet into the, or 15,000 feet up, three miles up, is confirmed. And we have so much documentation on all of this. It's a stupid amount of documentation. And because that wasn't a typical, let's see if it shows up here. There we go. Look at the damage that the tsunami done. So the tsunami ripped the country apart. 500 miles of the coastline. And these reactors, this is Fukushima. These reactors are right on the coastline. And they take an incredible amount of resources to run these facilities. And that's why they have that kind of equipment there. And that's Unit 1, though, right after the detonation. And so let's go back to the Pacific Ocean. And I just want to, yeah, we got to go back and touch on the follow-up quick, very quick, to keep the story going smoothly and correctly. So what you're seeing in this model of NOAA, which is the American government, that was hid away from you for the longest, for a number of years, and then it was leaked out by one of their employees. This was a whistleblower leaked this out. And so, but this model was based upon the iodine 131, and it had... It didn't include the 132, the 133, and the 129 with the 15 million year half-life. That has now got an extra, an extra electron attached to it. And that electron uh, gives it a new atomic weight. And that new atomic weight doesn't exist in our periodic tables or in our solar system that we know about. And that, that is why we call it a man-made element or atom or isotope or particle. And what these do, and what the studies have shown uh, repeatedly on dogs and animals and everything else, is that when it's released into your environment, you now up in the corner you kind of see the jet streams, and like I have no control over the function on this particular software, I can't make the pictures bigger or smaller, I can't turn volumes up or down, or I can't do any of the functions, I can barely import anything into it, it's just a testing software to try out but our original equipment all got taken down again by the nuclear PR firms. And they got, you know, they got endless money. They got 2,000 PR firms. 2,000 PR firms to shut me up, to smear me, to marginalize me, to attack me, to demonize me, to misrepresent everything I'm saying, to lull you in to thinking that it's like a banana or a potato chip or walking in the sunshine, or getting a dental x-ray, or sleeping next to somebody, or you're drinking water, or the ambient, or sunlight. or These are all innocent, normal, everyday emitters on the planet that won't mutate anything, certainly won't mutate humans, and couldn't mutate a fruit fly, or their larvae, or, or wouldn't mutate the small fries of fish, or anything like that, or insects in particular. But man-made... Stuff will mutate anything. Humans, you, you name it, there's nothing it won't mutate. It mutates everything. Plants, insects, animals, larvae, small fries, sperm, you name it, it mutates it. In the larvae, in the, in the, in the you know, any, any gestation 
of any mammals, animals, creatures, fish. And we've got studies after 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 studies, after studies uh, that are not public because they're not going to tell you right now in America, not just not counting Canada and who knows where else, but just in America alone, there's thousands of laboratories and Dr. Raymond Gilmetti from Loveless Respiratory Research Institute in New Mexico, New Mexico, uh, he's got 35 years, you look him up, killing beagle dogs and beagle puppies with plutonium, americium, and neptuniums, which are uh, man-made, ionized, radiated elements, and really bad ones. And they were present in large, huge, massive quantities in Japan. Reactors. Now, Japan's reactors, and we'll get to the fish in a second, Japan's reactors we're using the mixed oxide fuel in all the reactors. All the reactors had reclaimed plutonium from old, unstable nuclear missiles, nuclear bombs that had been sitting in silos, bomb silos and nuclear submarines and everywhere else, hid away all over the planet uh, for 40 or 50 years. And so they took these weapons, reclaimed plutonium uranium, and they burn them in the reactors. Now, you're not allowed to do that, but they created laws to allow them to do that, and, but there is no, they don't have any moral, ethical ground. They just created a legislation, or a, an administration, not legislation, and if they did have to create legislation, it wasn't hard, because all the politicians are uh, receptive to all the corporations. That's why they exist. They're the best representation for the corporations. That's how they got the job. And so corporations got corporate personhood, and corporate personhood is a mongrelizing of the doctrines of the, the Bill of Rights, the Magna Carta, the Constitutions for America. So they mongrelize these things to include corporations would get human rights as an amendment, a legal amendment, uh, to... Uh, an amendment to uh, uh, these constitutions, Magna Carta and Bill of Rights, to give slaves human rights. And so corporations piggybacked on that in increments over decades with corporate lawyers to give corporate personhood to corporations. So they got all kinds of protections under the constitutions, the Bill of Rights and the Magna Carta that are illegal, that are unconstitutional, that can be challenged, that need to be challenged. And so... What happens is, like, Google is a corporation. So Eric Schmidt or, say, Mark Zuckerberg are true criminals. But the problem is, because of the structure of their company, because they're on the stock market, they can't get a criminal record. And therefore, they're put on a pedestal. But they're actually criminals. They got what they got by stealing everything, and then they pay a million dollar, billion dollar fine, whatever, and make 10 billion profit. It's a conscious decision because they know they can't be prosecuted. And so that's what the nuclear industry is using right now to cover themselves, is this corporate personhood, right? So when, uh, that's why nuclear should never be allowed on the stock exchange, because now you can, never, uh, you can never control it, because they don't have uh, human rights, because they have human rights, when they used to have a charter. And the charter was, if they if they polluted your community or your country or your ocean or your entire planet, you you know how twisted is that one? You could pull the charter away from them, incarcerate them, sell their assets for restitution, outstanding debts, and to help mitigate. But then the government is depend. The government's job now is to come in and burn up money and resolve this issue immediately to take over, to incarcerate those. Uh, right, not to allow them to keep committing crimes like Zuckerberg or Eric Schmidt or any of these big corporate personhoods, and certainly Tevco. So, uh, it was, and I'll end on that. That it was a wrote, you know, Justice Hugo Black wrote eloquent dissent in 1939 of how absurd it was that an amendment used to free slaves from an oppressive government was being used by corporations to oppress the sovereign people to oppress a free people. And so as long as the corporate personhood exists, you will be a slave. There is no way around that. And, but it's an illegal amendment to the slavery law. Go look up the slavery law, look at the legal amendment, find a way to take it away from them. 
It's been challenged several times, but the people that were the senators and the congresspersons that were tasked with doing that were in the pocket of the corporation. That's how they got the job, right? Let's keep going. So let's jump into some of the headlines. And let me run back over and check the conversation, make sure I'm actually still streaming. Hi, Mandy. Shani Kent. Um... We might get a blurp blurp because I'm coming, I'm going to be chewing up bandwidth on this little computer while we're waiting. Make sure I'm streaming okay. Looks like I'm good. Everybody. Okay, we're doing good. Let's keep going. We'll get rid of that because that shows up the bandwidth and the resources on the computer and cause background noises. And so you can see I'm monitoring you here with these comments here. Hi, Miss Milky and Kate. You'll find these links below. Hopefully I put that there, who knows with me today. I'm still reorienting myself to try to use the software. I've been at this all night, getting my computer. As you can see, I got it, my computer desktop. Hang on, it's got it. Remember yesterday? Yesterday my computer looked like that. These, well, you can't really see it today. Uh, view, what am I doing, Dana? So yesterday would be my desktop, right, full of all of this stuff. All of that folder, every bit of it came from my desktop. So my desktop was totally loaded with files. And I mean, my goodness, when you click on files on my computer, you are walking into the bells of hell most times. That one's an easy one. Forbes. I haven't got to these files. Most of this stuff here I've never got to. But anyway... Um, you know, usually when you open it up, there's many, 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 many more files for the majority of it. You open up, they're usually loaded, blah, blah, blah. But anyway, let's keep going on the headlines. And we're up to speed of what I wanted to get to today. And just to make sure I got everything covered. Okay, so we covered all of those. Yeah? All right, let's get pretty busy. And just a reminder, to give you some visuals. Chernobyl, this was pre-Fukushima story. And I showed you one a couple of days from Gizmodo telling you the same stuff that I'm going to about to tell you. Uh, and for the next 10 days, spewed the equivalent of 400 Hiroshima bombs worth of radioactivity across 150,000 square miles of Europe and beyond. And they're talking about how Chernobyl lasted 10 days. Right? And was equal to four, the equivalent, the third line there, spewed the equivalent of 400 Hiroshima bombs, but Japan's reactors didn't stop. <clears throat> so let's cover some fish because this stuff is all going to fall out. And not just fall out, I suppose, is not the right way to put it. Because it's also hemorrhaging directly into the ocean at a phenomenal tonnage. Because the buildings, like I showed you earlier, are destroyed. And I hope that came out clear for everybody. But you can see this model is based upon six years. And I'll turn off any background ocean noise that was going on there. My apologies if there was. Uh, but this is a model based upon six years. Now, the actual ocean current comes across in uh, 45 days. So if you do the math... And I got Windows 10 on this computer, so I can't even find my calculator anymore. But what it did do was it resolved that this computer used to cut out. So if I didn't put Windows 10 on it, we wouldn't be streaming today because I probably wouldn't have worked out how to get around computer cutting out on me all the time. Because they actually killed this computer about a month after I got it too. But Windows 10 brought it back to life for me and is functional, but it still cuts out on me. So I'm careful not to use too much... Um, so let's go over to the headlines. So anyway, it crosses the ocean in 45 days at 5 miles per hour, conservatively, the Croatia current, the Pacific Iron, tra tra travels across in 45 days. So 5 miles per hour times 24 hours in a day. 5 times 24. And then multiply it by 45. Now, look at the jet stream comes over in 3 or 4 days. But what I'm showing you is dispersal that's actually being washed into the ocean. They're pouring 600 tons of water on the reactors. Now, that's just by itself. Let's isolate that by itself. 
So the, the model you're looking at, this model is only based upon a, a short release from Japan on top of that. It's not based upon the constant, endless, perpetual mass murder machine that it truly is or that the breeder reactors that they have become because they consume, they produce more than what we put in there originally. So originally we got uh, 3,450 assemblies, 80 rods, in e 80 rods in each assembly. Each rod is, uh, is 12 feet and 18 pounds. And a pound of it will kill 1,500 people per 20 minutes, conservatively. And so can a pound can exterminate the whole planet. But what happens is this stuff melts down, this huge mass that didn't get atomized and aerosol and, and thrown all over the place in the detonation that turned into a chain reaction, melted down into the earth and it cannibalized rocks, water, cement, rebar, everything around it. Now, when you think about temperatures, four, five, six, seven thousand Fahrenheit degree temperatures, you can't really pour water on that. You can't even drop a moose on that because that's hotter than the sun in many senses of the word. So it, it will atomize and aerosol the moose before the moose hits the mass. Or a piece of five inch rebar or eye beams, you know, like a 10 foot eye beam that's 50,000 tons. If you drop that down there, as it's trying to hit the mass down there, it's atomizing and aerosoling completely dissolved. And then that's so hot, you see, it's so tiny that, you know, Take a meter divided by a million and then take that one in a million out of a meter and divide that by 10,000. You put two million on a heaven needle, you can't see it, but that's two million cancers. And so the game that they like to play on you, the deception they play on you, is, the, is always mockery, try to mock you, but that's the actual numbers. Two million can fit on a head of a needle and you can't see it. I've been attacked with that one. Of course, that's easy to defeat. But I've been attacked repeatedly with that one. But back in the day, I didn't know how to respond to it when I was learning, you know, because I, I the, and I now I have a, a ready response for it. Well, you just because you can't, a, a single atom will give you a cancer. And so, because you can't see two million, does that negate it? No. Does that make it less so? No. U.S. scientists fall, finds Fukushima cesium in turtles and whales. Hang on, that's not where I want it. And so we got a lot of random headlines here. I'm always clicking away, don't mind me. There's always risk of another explosion, yeah, because this stuff. So a quarter, so what's going on, I just want to go back and remind you was that the models are still only based upon 600 tons a day being poured in. And so the tanks on this site where they're collecting 300 tons a day the other 300 tons go into the ocean. But they're also spraying water all over the site and all over the reactors. And then the ocean is inundating it. The water is coming down the mountain on top of that, behind it. And it's on a riverbed, so there's perpetual water running underneath it. And so during storms and rain and snow, all the water is washing the atoms and the isotopes and particles. And remember, these broken pieces are producing the atoms like a perpetual machine. That's what a nuclear is. It's a perpetual machine that lasts around 4 billion years, splitting atoms. That's why they have to contain this stuff. That's why there's nowhere on the planet to put this stuff. And because it creates a gas, a noble gas, and if you don't vent it, it will detonate. And so by proxy, creating it means you have to vent it perpetually till the end of time, and that if you don't, you'll have a detonation like we see at the Westlake landfill in St. Louis. As it's at some point it'll breach its containment. Now, these drums and these barrels and these big tanks where they're putting all the sludge into will create their own little chain reaction when these elements meet each other and will melt holes through the drums. And that's why they go so deep. And but there is no you that's not what you're supposed to do with it. That's not what they said they were going to do. They said they were going to build a containment unit to put it in. They didn't say anything about just pouring it into our earth or oceans like they did for 70 years, and now we've had these accidents that are catastrophic. These are catastrophic. And so a quarter billion liters of Fukushima contaminated water flows into the Pacific. Japan cover-up could violate international laws. 
and he hid the global issue of environmental concerns. Yeah, for a long time. They're still added heavily. Uh, they, they essentially now have killed Japan. And so if you go look up my episodes, Fukushima Meltdown episodes, you'll find the documentation of that. Enormous amount of contamination flowing from Fukushima will probably imperil the entire Pacific Ocean and threatens other countries' food chains. It's not just what's going into the ocean because it's still going into the atmosphere. Unlike Chernobyl, the reactors didn't stop. And the reason they got a sarcophagus over Chernobyl was because after 10 days, the, the chain reaction stopped because they sacrificed a million people. They took people right off the streets on top of that. And they're doing that in Japan. This is what they've always done. They've done that in Sellafield. They took people out of the back rows of theaters. I've covered all of this repeatedly, if you never heard this before. It's quite shocking. What, what you know, they took 800 pregnant women and injected them, told them it was vitamin injections, and then uh, they turned out to be plutonium uranium. And then they dug up their corpses after they died of the autoimmune deficiencies and cancers, and including the children that during the pregnancy that were born, they, without telling the loved ones, dug them up and took them away to labs, cremated them, crushed up the bones, and looked to see how much uh, plutonium americium was left over because they knew how much they gave them in the injection. That's how twisted the industry is. And that academic journals publish those papers. But they're hit behind paywalls. Elsewhere, Springer and Wiley publish, you know, are the three biggest publishers on the planet. they got 20,000 publishing, 22,000 publishing houses throughout North America. And they get all the like, academic copyrights immediately. They didn't pay for it. They didn't pay for the peer review study. They didn't pay for any parts of the study. They didn't even pay for the paper towels. They didn't pay for the toilet paper. They didn't pay for anything. The tenors, that was paid by taxpayers. And so three secretive organizations known as Elsewhere Springer and Wiley, which most people could never repeat those names. They got to listen to that over and over just to get wrapped their mind around it. But these are three secret organizations. They get the copyrights to all your universities and institutions. I'm going to digress. Let's keep going. But that's why I can't show you a lot of that documentation. But that doesn't mean I don't show you a lot of synopsis. That don't mean I don't show you a lot of documentation. Like Dr. Raymond Gilmedy's Loveless Respiratory Research Institute, uh, Beagle Dogs and Beagle Puppies. Nuclear expert how that guy killed Beagle Dogs and Beagle Puppies with tiny amounts. Not 10 hot particles a day every day, but just tiny amounts for 35 years. And there's a thousand institutions just like them. I doubt if they're just as evil. Then again, they have to be. you got to be an evil person to work for the nuclear industry. There is no way around that. Anything to do with nuclear, except what I'm doing, you got to be really, truly evil. You can't have a conscience or a moral compass to do that, to kill beagle dogs and beagle puppies for 35 years and not come up with solutions. Knowing that they're all going to die within three or four years, the 94 studies he produced... Dr. Raymond Gilmedy from Loveless Respiratory Research Institute. Look it up. They got, a doc, they got another Dr. Raymond Gilmedy out there showed up last year. He's a pediatrician. It's really interesting. He might not even be real, but he always shows up in that search every single time. And that's not the guy. The one, you know, just nuclear experts, you can look at it in the episodes I showed in all the episodes of Dr. Raymond Gilmedy so you can visually see the data. Nuclear expert, and just because I got a new software, it's hard for me to do it. And I'm way off my game yesterday. I kind of snapped. Today I'm calmed down a bit, but I'm struggling. I struggled all night and all morning. That's why I'm calmed down at this stage, trying to get this to work. I'm literally worn defeated, but I am streaming today, and so I ain't that defeated. But I'm just worn out trying to make this work this morning. And I'll do the same thing tomorrow and the day after the day after until we get the other operation back if that's what i got to do. And I can't afford to go out and burn money for the software for this. There's a cheap version, 200 bucks, But unless somebody donates, um, I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing. And so there's no green screens or anything. And I have to struggle all the time. And I'm not saying anything. I'm just saying that's the reality. So the trenches, you know, every time it rains, it washes that trenches down to the Pacific Ocean. They're burning it in radi um, in the incinerators throughout the country on top of that. Published concern over Japanese fish imports, and so I'll cover this in a second, but they're burning it in the incinerators. They're dumping it in the streams and the estuaries and the lakes and the rivers and directly into the Pacific Ocean when they decontaminate. 
They leave it on the coastline for it to bust open and leach back into the environment. Fukushima Prefectures has over 10,000 dumps. Uh, let me play a clip of uh, Ken Abusler from Woods Hole Oceanographic. And Ken, um, uh, that didn't show up. Of course not. Why would I? Why would anything show up in the computer? I had a little bugger there, but he's not there. Whatever, dude. Let me see if I can bring it in. Hang on. You never know, I might get lucky. Let's play it and see what happens. And these little arrows are the location and strength of the current called the Kurashio. We like to call it the Gulf Stream of the Pacific because we're more familiar often with the Gulf Stream. Very fast moving current, moves like a little snake offshore. And when you release a contaminant that's soluble, it's going to move with those currents as fast as 1,500 kilometers here in one month. This is a prediction from a Japanese model. Several groups were doing this early on, as you can imagine. And these little arrows. That's one good thing about the software. I'm pretty fast with it anyway. But like you say, it's the free version, and it has a huge issues. I tried to put my, my uh, big dad Bob clip in there. And it's just a little bit too high quality. It's like 840 frames or something. And the computer was frozen on me. And I had to restart the computer this morning. It was torture. And then I had to get that out there before I can get this stream <laughs> up and running today. It was just torture this morning. So I can't use any kind of quality quality in this. And so I got to reload everything each day to make this work. On top of that. Because it's a free version. So it's a struggle to get these streams out there. Trust me. And so the public's concern over Japanese fish imports looks to be justified. So, uh, and, and, you know, they went after Korea and they went after other countries because they didn't want to import the radiation. And uh, then the World Health uh, Trade Food Organization made other countries import the contaminated food. So the, these world trade companies are useless and a, and a betrayal uh, in every aspect of it. So the country didn't want to take it in because it's contaminated. And then the, the big corporations and the companies, countries, you know, the evil that goes on made them import it. Unknown where the Fukushima nuclear fuel went. I know where it went. I know where it continues to go. I know what it continues to do. And I'm trying to inform this population on this planet that we have to find a better way forward because there is no forward in this one. We're going to kill every species on the planet before we're finished. And we're going to kill the entire Pacific in the next two years. It'll all be gone. Right now, uh, look, that's just a good headline. I just threw in there. Chairman of the Oregon Republican Party suggests dropping nuclear waste from airplanes, airplanes for its health benefits. I suggest we drop him from an airplane. Wants to put radioactive material from San Ofrede in drinking water. This guy is a whack job. Art Robinson. But he's pro-nuclear. Not because there's good. this is good. No. It's because he's crazy. And that's why he got him in position of power. Because he is whack job. But if a terrorist get it, oh, we got to take away all your freedom. We, we need trillions of dollars all of a sudden because another terrorist might do the same thing. That's what's going to happen to you. And I mean, that's what all the fear-mongering is about. A terrorist gets it, dangerous. Drop it in your drinking water because we don't know what else to do with it. And so you really need to call up Art Robinson's office and scream at him for the next six months every day. That's the moral and ethical thing to do there. Yeah, you're going to get arrested, but take one for the team. I'm worried about pressure forcing water up to the cracked ground at the nuclear plant. The whole plant is liquefaction. Everything is just being sucked out into the Pacific Ocean or washed directly out by rain or the 600 tons they pour on it. They collect 300 tons and put it in tanks. The other 300 tons go out into the ocean. But make no mistake, that is not all that is being poured all over that site. <laughs> There's water running out of the site all the time. It's running down through the site all the time. All the buildings got cracks in it. Then it's leaching straight up into the environment and straight out falling into the Pacific Ocean, but also being carried directly around the entire planet. Unprecedented sockeye salmon at a dire historical low. Not only that, and that's because the food they're dependent upon, the anchovies, the sardines, the squid, the herring are all missing. This krill is all missing. 
That's why we see the mass die-offs. Most of these are de completely dependent upon the krill. And the krill are just above. They were converting the phytoplanktons and the zooplanktons and the pods and the, and the cells and everything into energy, right? And then the squid and everything else was eating the krill and all that. And the birds were eating it and the whales were eating it and converting it into muscle and fat and brains and energy. And so the salmon failed in Alaska. They were supposed to get 58 million. They got 3.4. They're expecting to harvest 38 million. Prince Rupert, British Columbia, Canada was a total failure, 170 and a three uh, thousand pieces at a three point five million they were expecting to harvest, and that plants and boats never even got a fish, and that the ocean was full of sea snot, which is notoriously associated with radiation, causing genetic uh, mutations, and susceptible. You got to realize the ocean. Uh, let me see. Hang on. <coughs> uh -huh. I'm going to show you something. Make sure I'm streaming this proper. Let's come back over and make sure I'm streaming. Well, I don't see everybody yelling at me, but let's run back up and run over. 41 minutes. I got a little... I'm going to show you some before and after pictures of British Columbia in the same spot. We got 30 thumbs up and 39 watching Miss Milky. Jan Brooks, she was saying she only sees nine thumbs up. If, but if you don't refresh your page, you won't see the new thumbs up. And so we done really good. 30, 30 thumbs up. And we got 39 souls. And I'm just looking through the conversation. It looks like everything is going good. Patrick says, loved all. Agreed. And Kathy, Candace, everybody else is down below. Let's keep rolling. In my stream in here, in, the, in here it says I got 46. And it says, uh, average video view duration is always only 12 minutes or something. That's not true. The people that are commenting at the beginning are commenting at the end, and there's at least... 40 of them that comes in and says, hi, they all watch the video, so it's not being honest. But anyway, that's the inside graphics, and none of it works properly. You can see we're showing up there in comparison to the actual live stream, was we know is about 30 seconds behind schedule. So let me find something, Louise Passage. So Louise Passage is in the Queen Charlotte's. Now I gotta bring up more folders. This might never end. Hang on. This might very well never end. And just give me one second. I'll bear with me. Because I think I know where I'm looking for. Um, damn it. I can't remember what I'm supposed to be looking for. I'm just. Okay. But I can keep going ahead and doing what I'm going to do anyway. So I'm the Queen Charlotte's we're up there. That's a GPS. Because this is very high quality. Sometimes it takes a while. So Louise Narls. That's Louise Narls. That's in the Queen Charlotte's. We we done 260 days on the ocean on the Fukushima Expedition for Life. And I just want to show you something anyway. Hopefully. Dana. And in these days I was snapping 2,000 pictures a day. That was last year. But you can see what it looks like there by the Zodiac where I beached it. Hang on. Let's run back. Let's get another picture give you context. Right here. And so, look at how these beaches are like... That's farther out. That's not the same spot. Hang on. Let me scroll. And you're probably going to get some staggering on your end going on. I'm looking for that spot. I'm going to show you what it was like pre-Fukushima. In a second at the same time. And this is a total disaster for me. Because I can't remember the exact spot. But I, I know. I got a really good memory. But I got 2,000 pictures. And I can see what it's doing. I'm going to close that. 
I'm waiting for that pitcher to show up and clean up. Let's get another pitcher. This is hellish. Okay, hang on. There you go. But anyway, what I'm doing is I'm going along that shoreline in Louise Narrow. And you can see that kind of green slime. That's all that was there. That's it. Nothing else. That's it. Uh, let me keep going. Hang on. La, 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 la. Supposed to be right there. Damn it. <sighs> Hang on. It's going to make me work for it again today. We're almost here. Bear with me. <sighs> okay, I'll do it just the hard way. Why not? That's just the way it is in my world. Got to find everything the hard way. Uh, come on, baby. Give it to me. There we go. So these pictures I'm going to show you. We're going to jump back and forth here. These are from the same spot. Here is now. Here's what it looked pre-Fukushima. Pre-Fukushima. The shorelines all look like that in that same spot I'm showing you. And this is a coveted spot. Now it looks like that. Now it's just disgusting. Right? There's some kelp cabbage and kelp weed. There was around four species out of the 5,600 species. So it should look like this. And this is not even a low tide. This is up. Hang on. Here's a really good example. You see all the, the, these are the joint plume sea anemones. Normally when they're underwater, they're two to three feet tall. And you will get up to 500 in a square meter. Not anymore. There was zero throughout the whole coastline out of the water. Zero. It's all gone, see, is what I'm trying to show to you. But this picture could be anywhere on the coastline of British Columbia. It's gone from the entire coast. And so that's the basis of the food chain. Here's what it looks like in Louise Narrows. We covered this extensively twice. I wrecked the boat after we done $6,000 worth of damage to the boat. We went into uh, Queen Charlotte City. And rebuilt it and hit it back out here and done it again. I washed up on the rocks 3.30 in the morning in 75 mile an hour sustained winds gusting up to 100 mile an hour in a hurricane. Two of my anchors dragged. It was a night of terror for me. But we got this data. That is what you're looking at right here. And that whole coastline... That's right on the side on the ocean. Does that, you know, let me find a clean picture. Because the boat, you can't slow down because the tide moves there so fast. And that's why there so, was so much life there because there was so much oxygen. The whole open ocean as it floods through these islands, it pinches right there at Louise Narrow or Dolomite Passage. So any of those two places, that, and we covered both of them, right? But see, this is what it would normally look like. Very healthy. 600 algae, 78 species of sea anemones. All of these came in variety colors. Like these guys here, there's 78 species. It doesn't just come in brown. It, that same species come in white and comes in gray. You know, like, and, but there's these red and greens and yellows and purples and these huge, massive, visible colors, you know. Very sustained. The, the purple you see back there is sea urchins. And they would be out of the water everywhere. And so what you're seeing there is what you would be lucky to find anywhere on the coastline right now would be this one species. Because the starfish, they come in the same color, uh, different colors. And that green sea anemone. So if you're really lucky, that's what you would find. And if you're not so lucky, but like in, in normally this is what you would see. The whole coastline just vibrant life everywhere you're looking. And now it looks like this, where there's no life anywhere you're looking, no matter where you look, even underwater. Right? And so, this is what it's supposed to look like everywhere you went. 
This is what you should be slipping on and falling on all the time. And 600 of this, 70 of that, 78 of us of the D's and 74 of those. And then, you know, there's 4 million species in the ocean. There's the 6,500 invertebrates with the backbones that would live amongst all of this. That is all missing. Yeah? And we documented all of that. These, what you're looking here, like I open that up, that's what you get. That's 240 gigabytes just right there. We're uploading this stuff. Banks Island, underwater Northwest Banks Island. That was on the last expedition. Let's play that in the background. And I don't think the quality was very good. I think, yeah, maybe it was. Let me kill the sound, just case. But look at the kelp, see how ragged it is. The whole kelp on the whole coastline, whatever is left is dead. And has these white patches right through it. So like it's like if I took a tree and half the and half the parts of the tree this big are dead, the trunk. And then the tree is healthy, and then the tree is dead. Then the tree is healthy, then the tree is dead. Every branch is like that. This much is healthy, this much is dead. Or this much is dead, or this much is dead. So how can it survive in the whole coastline? So yeah, it's really bad quality. But uh, there's the uh, kelp. And anybody knows a little bit about this, know, and knows anything about me, knows that the worst thing I could do is tell a lie, is misrepresent something, is to fabricate anything. Price Island, more island. And I gotta watch what I'm doing here. But I'm just saying, that there's endless, we got endless, endless, endless amount of material. You can't even imagine what we actually got. You see like Terry's name there. Well, there should be a folder there where it's all Terry, right? And all Jason and all Simon and all Dana on top of all the folders you're seeing by themselves. These were all the Queen Charlottes. Underwater to know. This is Louise Passage. And once again, you know, Is that underwater? Oh yeah, that was underwater. And that was the pictures I was just showing you. Now I took screen captures of this and put it up on the website. This is a very long video and you're moving pretty fast. So it's hard to get screen captures, but we did try. We're almost through this stuff. And, but there is a video on my website of this where I have a land camera and an underwater camera and it goes through the whole passage. And so, but I just wanted to show you, and every time I show pictures like this, some frigger out there gets contacted by the PR firms and said, hey, we got him. He put up one of your pictures. Let's nail him on copyright. Will you take him down? We'll tweet out your pictures all over to the nuclear world. And that's what they've done and so I, I ended up having to force the guy who done it to me the last time to put the video back up because we, we threatened him with a lawsuit immediately to counter that because I'm allowed to use that material under copyright. I can use 10%. And I've been at this for eight years and I know what I'm doing. So I'll be able to get away with it. But um, krill and low oxygen this is stuff I'll never get to and probably with you guys. Let me see though if I can help us out a little bit. The economy of dead zones causes impacts, policy changes, blah blah blah. Hang on. Uh okay, that's the one. I'm getting better, but I mean it's gonna take me a few days to get up to speed because this computer, everything is everywhere. My other computer that got knocked down yesterday. I mean I got right on my screen before I went live, I get a message. Uh F U Dana. And then my computer crashes and we can't get it to start up anymore. Like, that's no different than coming into my house and doing that to me, is it? How is that different? That's nine computers that have been killed in a year and a half. And these are just used for doing what I'm doing right now. It's shocking how much I've been attacked just in comment sections all over the internet and just in uh, the nuclear apologists that are getting paid to come out and attack me and demonize me and misrepresent everything I'm doing and saying. We we crowdfunded and organized 
operation, a high ball operation. We covered this entire coastline, 15,000 miles, 260 days out of 365 days on the ocean, on the ocean. Stop at the nuclear proctologist all the time. And I don't know if I'm going to be able to, to maintain uploading pictures anymore now because I haven't got the beat computer here to work with. Because this thing has got no power and I got... It's just too hard for me to do this. And I, we, we haven't raised any money. We raised $2,100 towards the TriCaster. And while I'm talking about that, let me just blurp blurp on that for one second. Because I got that sitting there somewhere. Maybe. Who knows with me anyway, right? I got so much. And there's... It should be right there, though. I should be looking at it. But it's not. TEPCO's ready to release radiation, not information. But that other stuff should have been right there that time. Whatever. Let's keep going. Let's keep going with those headlines. Make sure I'm actually headlining out. Yeah. And so, oceans are losing the oxygen, becoming more hostile for life. Low oxygen areas. No. What happened was that constant radioactive fallout killed the phytoplankton. And the phytoplankton produces 50% of the oxygen, not just for the ocean, all the oxygen, but for 50% of the planet. And 250 feet down, 200, hey now. These are not coastal dead zones like the ones that sprawl across the Gulf of Mexico, but great swaths of deep water can reach thousands of miles offshore are already naturally low in oxygen. They're not naturally low in oxygen. This is the cover-up. That's what National Geographic does, is the cover-up. They're not going to bring Fukushima into the equation. And you, how can you not bring Fukushima into the equation, see? is the point I'm trying to make to you. But anyway, uh, what they recognize is that have expanded by 1.7 square... Uh, in the past, They say the last 50 years... But see, that's, that's, they've been dumping radioactive materials in the ocean for the last 50 years. And so 50 years ago, they didn't even freaking know what they were doing when they were studying the ocean. They went out and took a picture of a fish and wrote an article on it, okay? They took a picture of a whale and wrote an article on it. Killed it, cut it open, said it got a heart, a liver, a lung. It's not like the spectrometry and equipment they got right now, trust me. Okay. Looks like we're winding down. 1127. Let me burn through a couple more headlines. Yeah, I heard that too, Zoe. Experts say radiation levels in oceans too high to explain by the groundwater flow alone. Well, look, like I showed you, the hearing you're missing, the sardines are missing. Okay, Zoe. Okay, Zoe. Okay, Zoe. Calm down. Hey, 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 hey. Hey. Okay, well, we got company. I'm going to give it up. We'll talk to everybody tomorrow in the next episode. And so hugs for everybody. Don't forget, we are doing this now on the budget that's getting smaller and smaller. We haven't got any more donations. we got to raise money to continue this operation. There's no nuclear operation on the show that doesn't raise a massive amount of money to sustain itself. We're not raising money. And we've got to sustain ourselves or I'm going to have to give it up in this context of my hopes and dreams and just do what I'm doing now. But I will never give up what I'm gonna, what I'm doing. Don't get me wrong. But we we need to come out and pound these people. Everything is missing off the entire coastline of Canada. Hugs for everybody. Take care, folks.